let's go to the you know, the measures of location. So, in order for us to uh, make sense of our data from our experiment, we tend to measure its location or that central tendency. The the common common uh, measures of locations are the mean and the median. Okay. So, yun the mean and the median. For the mean, uh, we have a population mean, which is given by this equation. It's just the sum of uh, the value of your sample from from one up to your sample size. By the way, n is your sample size. For this one, uh, this is population, meaning this is the population size, size the big N. So again, uh, for our mean, we have this form formula right here that the mu is equal to the sum of all your of all your samples from 1 up to your sample size okay and you divide those by your sample size uh, for this one since this is the you know we are considering population this is the population size the uh, big n but for the sample mean uh, this is supposedly sorry this is supposedly uh, small n this is supposedly small n okay for our sample mean uh, they are actually uh, similar because they are both uh, just adding your uh, samples and then dividing by the total number of samples okay for the median naman we have this formula right here uh, we have two formulas okay uh, basically uh, this just uh, basically mean that you need to take the middle value of your samples this formula right here uh, for this one naman the second formula this is by the way for the first formula that is for the the if your this if your sample size is odd you use this formula right here and if your sample size is even naman you use this formula right here this formula uh, right here just uh, basically means that you need to take the middle uh, data but first you need to uh, write your data into ascending or descending order depending on your choice uh, we have we'll have examples later in order for you to visualize them clearly and for the second part naman if your n is even you need to take the two middle values and take the average of those two for example so, so suppose the data suppose the sample data set is the following you have 1.7 uh, 2.2 3.9 3.11 and 14.7 so solving for our sample mean using this formula right here Solving for our sample mean, we have, again, this is, uh, <clears throat> this is basically the same. This is basically the same with here. Uh, you have Kuno to add all of your data and then divide your data uh, with its sample size. For this sample, what is the sample size? 5. five. The sample size is 5. The sample size is just the number of your samples. Okay, again. The, this formula right here means that you need to take the sum of all of your samples then divide those by your sample size right here. Okay? That's what this formula means. So you have 1.7, 2.2, 3.9, 3.11, and 14.7. You divide those by your sample size, you have your mean being, sample mean being equal to 5.12. So for the median naman, uh, you first need to arrange the data in an ascending order or in a descending order, depending on your choice. And then after you, okay, and after you uh, arrange your set of data, so you have 1.2, 1.7, 2.2, 3.9, 3.11, and 14.7. You need to take the middle data, the data uh, that is located at the middle of your arranged set of data. Say, uh, we have uh, our sample size in here being equal to 5. Okay. So, the middle data is 3.9. Okay. Baga, yun yung gitna. Diba? You have 2 to the left and 2 to the right. The mathematical expression for that formula is basically this one. So, if your sample size is uh, 5, so substitute 5 in here. You have 5 plus 1, that is 6. And then you divide it by 2. So, 3. So, meaning the third data. So, this is the first, the second, and the third data. So, the sample median is 3.9. Sir, paano sir kung ang sample size sir 6? Yun. If the sample size is 6, meaning it is even, tiba. So, if it is even, we're gonna use this formula right here. So, uh, let's try to uh, make an example. So, 
you, uh, let's try to use this uh, sample right here and add uh, another data lang. So we have 1.7, 2.2, uh, 3.9, 3.11, 14.7, and uh, let's just add 14.8. It is a range in an ascending order. So have, so uh, you have two middle terms in here. Okay, you have 3.9 and 3.11. What you're going to do is just uh, you you need to take lang the average of those two values. Therefore, you have one half multiplied by uh, 3.9 plus 3.11, 3.5. That's now your uh, sample median if uh, this is your given set of data. You understand? Yes, bro. The mathematical expression for that is this one. You need gonna to take the sample with the uh, subscript of n over 2. If your n is 6, okay, 6 over 2 is 3. So the third sample. So first, second, third. Okay. And for this one, this one right here, uh, if this is... Diba, uh, we already know that this is n over 2 is equal to 3. So, 3 plus 1, 4. So, so 1, 2, 3, and this one is 4. So, the third and the fourth sample, add those, and you need to take the half. And then you have 3.5. So, uh, we also have other measures of location. We have the trimmed mean. Okay, so a trimmed mean is uh, computed by trimming away a certain percent of both the largest and the smallest set of values. Uh, we tend to do trimmed mean in order for us to minimize, if not eliminate, the outliers. Okay? So the trimmed mean is, of course, more uh, insensitive to outliers than the sample mean, but not as insensitive as the median. Okay, so uh, for the example, suppose we have the sample data set shown below. We are to solve the 10% of trimmed mean. We need to eliminate the uh, lowest 10% and the highest 10% of our samples. But uh, in order for us to determine how many or ilan yung ibabawas natin from our sample, we need first to learn. Uh, what is our sample size? So, for this given set of data, what is our sample size? 10. Okay? So, uh, in the problem, it stated that we need to trim 10%. Okay? We need to trim 10%. So, uh, we need to find what is the 10% of our sample size. What is the 10% of 10? What is the... It is 1. Meaning, we are to uh, remove we, or we are to trim. We are to trim the lowest value and the highest value. Lowest one value and the highest one value. Because if if this is 20%, if this is 20%, uh, we need to take 20% of our sample size. So what's the 20% of 10? It is 2. Diba? And we need, uh, for this one naman, we need to eliminate the lowest two values and the highest two values. Bali, you're taking away four values. But in the, in the problem, it only uh, stated that, that we only need a 10%. So we are only taking the lowest value and the highest value. Skipping the arranging part, let's just uh, find what is the lowest value in this uh, given set of data. The lowest value lang muna. So the lowest value in here is 0 0.28. Why? Because 0 0.32, 0 0.53, 0 0.28. There are no other values which is lower than this one. So therefore, this is the lowest value. We are to eliminate this one. And we need also to eliminate the highest value. What is the highest value? 53. So we also, uh, we need also to eliminate this one right here. So solving for the trimmed mean, we just add all of the uh, values left in our uh, sample. So we have 0 0.32, 0 0.37, 0 0.47, 0 0.43, 0 0.36, 0 0.42, 0 0.38, and 0 0.43. Now, what uh, divisor should we use? Should we use 10? We're going to use 8 because the remaining data has a sample size na lang of 8. Walo na lang sila. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, uh, we're taking the average of the data left. Okay, so we need to divide uh, the data by 8. So, the answer is 0 0.39750. And the mode. Ito yung pinakamahirap. This is the hardest of all measures of location. The mode is the uh, most frequent data in the sample or population. Okay, example. So, suppose the prices of houses in a subdivision are shown below. You have 0.9 million, may the 0.8 million, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, million, yan, 500 million. Okay, the question, what is the mode of in this given set of data? It says here that the mode is the frequent data. 
Okay, what is the frequent data right here? 1.5, right? Because it appeared thrice. Makatulo. It appeared thrice. So, therefore, our mode is 1.5 million. Kung baga, uh, ma may imagine mo to, like, ito yung mga pr uh, prices ng mga house in a certain subdivision, tapos may biglang 500 million. So, and you try to eliminate this possibility that this can represent whole of the data. Siya lang yung, uh, siya lang yung naiiba. Uh, if you try to uh, uh, imagine it from a certain angle, uh, yung 500 million yung, lang yung naiiba. So, this one is called an outlier. Outlier. Uh, meaning, uh, if you try to use the sample mean in measuring the uh, central tendency, parang yung assumption mo, I mean yung mean mo will be off because uh, you have 500 million right here. Parang uh, it will be off from 1.5 million. Sige daw. Uh, let's try to ano, let's try to calculate the the sample mean. Okay? So we have 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 1.5 times 3 plus 2 plus 500 divided by ilan sila? 1 2 3 4 5 6 7. What is the value of the sample mean? Please compute. That is 72.6 million. Right? So, uh, uh, in a sense, so, kumbaga, if you try to analyze, can this value right here represent this whole data right here? Ang layo. It's very far from the normal values. Now, you have 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, and 2 million. Then, suddenly, uh, there has, ano, uh, there have been a 500 million. If you try to find the mean, you have this value right here. Uh, in my, in your uh, opinion, uh, this does not represent the values of the uh, data. Uh, better use mode. Because, uh, yun ya, it best represents the whole of the data given. So, uh, if we have measures of central tendency or measures of location, we also have measures of variability. Okay? So, we have range. So, range is given by this formula. You need to take lang the maximum value, then subtract that one with the minimum value. Okay? Kung baga, earlier, in our trimmed mean, we try to eliminate the maximum and the lowest values. For this one naman, the range, we subtract those values. The maximum and the minimum values. And the variance. Okay? For the population variance, this is the formula right here. Uh, don't try to memorize the formula. Uh, but you, I mean, you can try to memorize the formula. But uh, it would be better if you try to understand what the formula means. So we have population variance and sample variance. This is sample variance and population variance. Uh, if you try to notice, if this is our sample. And by the way, what is mu? This was discussed earlier. What is mu? This is? What is this one? This is the population mean. Diba? And what is X bar? X bar is the sample mean. Okay? If you try to analyze the formula right here, it says in here that X of Y or your sample minus the population mean. Okay? And there the difference is to be squared. You square kuno their differences. And then you sum them up from 1 up to your uh, population size. And then you divide by the whole population. Uh, similar to uh, sample variance. This is sample variance again. You take the sample, subtract that one. You take the sample, you subtract that one by the sample mean. And then you square the difference. The square their difference, and then you sum them up from 1 up to the sample size, and then you divide uh, them by n minus 1. Uh, why not uh, n? Same with the population variance. If you try to sasabihin nyo, Sir, ba, uh, yung, mean, uh, yung sample at saka population mean, same man lang sila. Uh, wa, uh, bakit yung variance iba? Uh, their difference will be shown in the later chapter. Marirealize niyo, you'll uh, realize that uh, the sample variance should be divided by n minus 1. So, but for now, let's just uh, stick to n minus 1 lang muna. Okay? So, in short, 
if we're uh, considering the sample variance, this formula means that that this is the sum of the squared difference and then you try to divide that one by n minus 1. Again, for the sample variance, because uh, we'll be dealing most of the sample variance, this is just the sum of the squared difference for all of your samples to the sample mean. Okay, so let's have an example para mas, uh, para you can uh, visualize this one clearly. And uh, lastly pala, we have standard deviation. For standard deviation naman, it's just the, you know, if you try to take the square root of your variance, then you have your standard deviation. So, standard deviation is, is equal to the square root of your variance or S squared. So, for example, we have this problem right here. An engineer is interested in testing the bias in the in a pH meter. Okay, Data are collected uh, on the meter by measuring the pH of a neutral substance, which is 7.0. Uh, the sample size is uh, sample size is 10, uh, with the results given by uh, the value below. So one of the <clears throat> use of uh, measuring uh, variability is uh, for you to check if your if your uh, Say, if your instrument for this problem, the engineer has an instrument which is the pH meter. Meron siyang pH meter. And he or she wants to check the bias, meaning the variability of that instrument. Because uh, she want, uh, he or she wants to check if the pH meter uh, produces accurate results pa. So that's why uh, we have right here the actual value or the, uh, kumbaga, meron tayong uh, baseline ba? That after our measurements, uh, we can notice that we use uh, measures of variability in order for us to make sure that if uh, that our uh, instruments are really capable of doing their job. Okay? Kumbaga, it i-evaluate di rin alabiyog hit mga hit dapat niya nga value which is 7.0. If you have uh, friends in the uh, medical field, uh, specifically in medical technology, before, ito, ganito yung ginagawa nila, before they start uh, testing samples, because they are testing samples uh, per day, di ba? they first need to check their uh, instruments kung correct pa ba't ginahatag na results. Okay, kung di rin na ito correct, so you need to make adjustments na. You need to uh, repair that one ba or... Uh, we need to eh, labog na ba ito ya? So on and so forth. That's, uh, no, that's how important variability is. Sige. So again, uh, uh, we have a sample size of 10 with the following values. We need to take, uh, I mean, we need to check the bias. Uh, meaning, we need to check for its variance and our standard deviation. So, uh, ganito lang yan. So, by this point, we all know how to take or to determine what is the sample mean. So, we just need to add all of this value right here. We just need to add all of this value right here. And then divide that one by its sample size, which is 10. 10. The sample size is 10. And our sample mean is 7.0250. Okay? So, to determine naman our standard deviation, ganito lang yan. Uh, since the formula right here states that it is n minus 1, so we have 1 over 9. Okay, We have 1 over 9 because uh, we, have, we have sample size uh, 10. So 10 minus 1, it is 9. And then we take the difference, the squared difference of all the sample to the mean. Okay? So uh, for the first sample, the value is 7.07. .07. So, 7.07 .07 minus the mean, which is equal to this one, 7.0250. Okay? Then, after that, you square that value. And then, you add all of those values. Then, you divide by 9. So, you uh, you do this uh, for all of your samples. So, for this one, 7.07 .07 okay, minus the mean. 7.00 minus the mean. 7.10 Minus the mean, plus so on and so forth until such time, you end up at 7.08, 08, 
uh, minus the mean. Then, uh, uh, you square those values, isa-isa, and then, you try to add them up until such time, makuha mo na yung uh, final value, then you divide that 1 by 9, or n minus 1. Since n again is 10, minus 1, it is 9. So, therefore, your standard deviation is 0.001939. And for us to find the, I mean, this is followed by S squared. And then if you want to take the, uh, the standard deviation, you just take its square root. Okay. And then you have uh, 0 0.044. Okay. So uh, going back to the problem, usually we have a predetermined standard deviation. Okay. Kumbaga, ang point in here is kung maglapos ang natong standard deviation na natong ginset din nga value, we need to repair the, the, the instrument. Baga, amo ito niya gamit. Kung kaya na niya gin, gusto kuha ko ng bias. Okay. Uh, after niya pag-check kan variability, uh, maka, makakasaring na yan na kinahanglan na na akong iniig uh, repair or uh, remove. Remove and replace. Ah, by the way, ito pala yung pinakamahirap the range. <laughs> Finding the range, you just need to take the maximum value. What's the maximum value? It's 7.10 from the sample. And then you subtract that one by the uh, minimum value, which is 6.97. Therefore, the range is 0 0.13. Yun yung pinakamahirap range. <laughs> and uh, next, we'll be discussing uh, all about types of data. So, this is the uh, a uh, simple diagram for the uh, types of data, the common types of data. In here, the data is basically divided into two, between quantitative and qualitative. So, in the quantitative uh, side, we have continuous and discrete type of data. So, uh, continuous type of data are those data uh, with an infinite limit. I mean, continuous data uh, is infinite for a set of range. Like for example, there is an infinite number between 1 and 2. Again, this the, uh, there is an infinite number between 1 and 2. So why did I say so? So I can have 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, so on and so forth. Okay? I can also have 1.01, 1.02, and 1.03. So, these types of data are called continuous because they are infinite in a, in a given set of range. So, the range is 1 to 2. There are infinite data between 1 and 2. So, for the discrete data naman, if continuous is infinite, discrete naman is finite. Meaning, it has a limit. Okay, like for example, how many basketball uh, balls do each student own? So one student will say that uh, he has three balls, another student he has five balls, and six, so on and so forth. So that's basically the difference between a continuous and a discrete type of quantitative data. So for the qualitative type of data naman, we have uh, two types. We have attributive and open. For the open type of data, these are the data that are commonly seen in your uh, customer satisfaction survey. If you, if you have seen a customer satisfaction survey, at the bottom part of, uh, of that customer satisfaction survey, uh, they are asking for comments. Or on the, ano, on the comment side of uh, YouTube, those comments can be considered as open data. Because uh, that data, those data, has no uh, limits. Wala siyang limit. Like for example, uh, uh, they can comment on anything from the type of video and to the content. Okay? Like uh, if you say it's open data, meaning you, you can have uh, anything for the type of data. So that is why it's called open and open data. So for the attributive naman, there are two types of attributive uh, data. Uh, we have ordinal and nominal. For the ordinal naman, uh, as the word suggests, uh, this has an order. 
Like for example, uh, in your elementary days, you had your uh, reading reading chart. Uh, I don't know if you want uh, to encounter this one. You have your reading chart for the whole of the section. So, in the legend part, there is a uh, there is a para order of your uh, of your quality of reading. Diba? you have uh, very good, good, uh, moderate, and poor. Parang ganon. So, uh, this is an order from very good up to poor. Okay. So that's why those data are called uh, ordinal because it has a order. For the nominal naman, for the nominal type of data, this data naman has open here we have I mean uh, this is uh, somewhat uh, similar but na not quite with the open type of data because in the nominal type of data you're also free. Meaning, uh, what I put here limit, like for example, this type of data, we can consider this type of data uh, like what is your preference for uh, your choice, particularly on the nationality. So, if uh, some will try to answer uh, Filipino, some will try to answer German, some will try to answer uh, American, so on and so forth. So, those data are, are called nominal. Uh, the Warinia order, there has, uh, there isn't an order between those uh, data. Unlike for the ordinal, this has an order. Okay, so let's try to uh, check your comprehension. Uh, let's try to determine in these examples what are these type of data. Okay, so ito. Please describe your stay at our hotel. What is this type of data? Open. Very good. This is an open type of data. Because... When you say, uh, when you're asking to describe the, uh, their stay at, at their hotel, there are uh, many ways that they can describe your hotel from the, the room up to the room service, the concierge, the lighting, the water, so on and so forth. So for this type, we can generate an open type of data. Usually, open types of data, we can uh, summarize it effectively. Because it has a very wide range. And next, for this one, the pet type. Snake, cat, and dog. What is this type of data? This is nominal. 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 Okay? Because this uh, doesn't have an order. Okay? So it is an attributive and it does not have an order. Therefore, it is a nominal type of data. Ito, how tall is somebody? What is this type of data? This isn't a discrete type of data because the height of somebody has an infinite number of, of uh, data between uh, a range. Like for example, the average height of Filipino is from 1.5 meter to 1.8 meter. So again, there are an infinite number of, of data between 1.5 and 1.8 meter. Okay? If your data has a range, and uh, there are infinite number of data within that range that is called a continuous data. Okay. The number of wheels on the truck. The wheels on the bus go around. Yeah. Okay. What, what is this type of data? Discrete, sir. This is discrete. Discrete. Because it has a finite number of value. You can have a number of wheels nga, uh, one, a number of two, three, four, five, so on and so forth. But there are no wheels nga 1.5. There is uh, no way <laughs> that you can have a wheel that is 1.5. Ito, Customer Satisfaction Survey or CSS. Uh, we have uh, very satisfactory, satisfactory, good and poor. What is this type of data? Attributive, ordinal. Attributive, ordinal because this is an order. Uh, this has a very satisfactory range, satisfactory, good, poor, and poor. Next, uh, in the previous, uh, I mean in earlier, diba? we uh, discussed all about uh, measures of location and uh, measures of location, central tendency. Uh, we did mean, median, and also we've covered uh, other measures of location such as 
uh, trim the mean and mode. So today naman, we'll be uh, dealing with uh, statistical modeling. So another way uh, for us to make sense of our data. Uh, earlier again, we discussed the different types of data. So now naman, uh, we'll be uh, visualizing our data. So that is called actually uh, statistical modeling. Now we visualize our data. Okay, so the first uh, method is scatter plot. Scatter plot uh, is used to show a relationship between two variables. A symbol usually adapt is used to show a data pair. Okay, so let's try to have one example. So you were tasked to present uh, the data using a scatter plot for the study conducted, which involves the number of hours, uh, number of hours studying, and the score. They uh, get in an exam. The data is shown below. The data is this one. So, at the left hand side of the data, you have the number of hours studying, and for, uh, for the right hand side of the data, you have the exam score. So, uh, the way you do scatter plot, it's like similar plotting in your partition coordinate plane. We can consider uh, these uh, two values right here as our x and y values if we if if we try to compare it with uh, plotting in the cartesian coordinate plane so uh, let's just say that the uh, number of our studying we can uh, plot it in the x axis let's say this is for the x axis and for the exam score naman this will be on our y axis so this pair right here 2 and 53 this can be considered as a point Okay, diba? we have 2 and 53 for our x and our y. Also, we have 4.5 and 35. 4.5 and 35. And also, we have 5 and 91. Okay, so the way we do this is we try to uh, draw the uh, partition coordinate plane. We have the x axis, our x axis being the number of hours studying, and our y axis is the exam score so uh, for this one we have a we have a point for this point we have 2 and 53 when x is 2 y is 53 that is somewhere here let's just say that this is 53 and the next one we have 4.5 and 35 so this is 3 this is 4 so 35 is somewhere here okay and so on and so forth so after you uh, plot all of the all of the uh, points, you can have uh, somewhat like this. Okay, ito na. So at the x-axis again, you have the number of our study, and at the y-axis you have your exam score. So for the first point at two hours, we have two and fifty-three. So it's here, and also we have four point five and thirty-five. So four point five and thirty-five. Uh, this is uh, 3, uh, you know, 3 and 62, so this is 3 and 62, because 3 is somewhere here, and uh, so on and so forth. Kumbaga, uh, you can notice easily that uh, there is a trend, okay? So that's why uh, the essence of plotting, of plotting your uh, data is for you to gain an insight of what your data suggests. Like for example, this one. If you try to notice, as you increase the numbers of hours studying, uh, your exam score tends to also increase. Okay, we can uh, draw that inference uh, using this uh, line right here. This is our. This is called the best fitted line. This uh, hidden uh, line right here. As you can see, the trend is going up. So therefore, your data uh, says that if you try to increase your number of hours studying, you can also increase your exam score. Try to compare this figure with this one, right? Try to, config, uh, try to uh, compare this figure right here with this uh, data right here. Diba? In this presentation of data, you can easily say that, uh, I mean, you can easily make a conclusion, unlike, unlike if you try to plot your data, you can make a uh, immediate inference. Okay? 
pag plot mo pa lang ng points mo, you can easily say that uh, the trend is increasing. So, yun. It can be noticed that uh, as you increase your, your uh, number of hours studying, your relative score also increases. So, it is important to note that this inference is based on the best fitted line shown as the hidden line. So, it's this one. As I've said, as I've said earlier. Next. Uh, the, the next technique is called the stem and leaf plot. So a stem and leaf plot uh, are a table used to display data. As the stem is on the left side, uh, displays the first digit or digits, while the leaf naman is on the right side, which uh, displays the last digits. Okay. So for example, if you are given with this type of data, you are asked to uh, you are asked to uh, make a stem and leaf plot for this given type of data. What you're going to do is uh, uh, first draw a, ta a table with the stem on the uh, left hand side and the leaf at the right hand side. Okay, so we also provide columns. Okay, so uh, before pala, you can uh, write your data in a stem and leaf plot. You first need to rearrange your data into ascending or descending order, depending on your choice. But uh, for our for our example, let's say that we are to arrange our sample in an ascending order. So what is the uh, no, first data if we are considering an ascending order? Data is seven. Next. Eight, sir. Eight, sir. Eight. Eight. 13 13 24 24 double check how many uh, what is the sample size for this uh, data right here. What is its sample size? 16. 1, 2, 3, 15. 4, 5, 6. 6 times 2 is 12 plus 3, that is 15. The sample size is 15. So let's double check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times 2, 12 plus 3, 15. So correct. Uh, we've arranged it uh, correctly. So, ganito, if you are to make a stem and leaf plot, you need to make a range of uh, your values. For example, what is the you know, what is the lowest values in, in our data? We mm -hmm. have seven and seven. Diba? So uh, if we try to consider a range, if we try to consider a range, okay, and by the way, the stem and leaf plot is this one lang right here. But uh, for us to be able to effectively make our uh, stem and leaf plot, let's, uh, we need to consider again the range. So this 7 and 8, this data right here, 7 and 8, falls under the range between 0 to 9. Uh, this is how you do a stem and leaf plot. So your range is from 0 to 9, so your stem should be 0, and your leaf should be 7 and 8. Meaning, uh, there are two values right here, which is 0, 7, 0, 8. Yet, the two numbers right here is 0, 7, and 0, 8. Okay, we continue. The next range of values is from 10 to 19. Okay, we are right uh, in our stem 1. And then we continue with the, this data right here. We have 13, 13, 15, 17. So we have 13, 13, 15, 17. As you can notice, at the left-hand side of our figure in our step, uh, we display the first digit 
of our data. And at the leaf naman, uh, we display the uh, se uh, the last digit of our data. Okay? So you can try to notice again, this is uh, uh, 0708. We have 13, 13, 15, and 17. Oh, can you notice now the pattern? Next, we yes. have 2. What is 2? This should be 2. 22, 24, 4, 5, 5 7, 7, 8. 8. Very easy, right? So next, we have 3. 32, 32, 36. Okay, and the last one is 4. Yeah, 43. Okay, so you, ito. Next, we have the histogram. So we are done with scatter plot, stem and leaf plot, and now we'll be discussing about a histogram. So a histogram is a graphical display of data using bars of different heights. In a histogram, each bar groups members into ranges. Color bars show that more data falls into that range. A histogram displays the shape and spread of continuous sample data. Okay. Where, uh, as naman, the uh, relative frequency histogram is a variation of histogram. This uh, represents the, re the relative frequency of the ranges. So, uh, let's try to uh, have an example so that we can uh, visualize it more uh, clearly. Uh, histogram is just similar to your bar chart. This is similar to your bar chart wherein you have your x-axis being equal to uh, a certain variable tapos your y-axis a certain variable we have one. Okay, for example, uh, you are working as a data scientist of a car manufacturer. Your boss asks you to present the car battery life in years of each of, the, of your new car model using a relative frequency histogram. 40 cars were tested and the results are as follows. Ito. Uh, medyo madami. Medyo madami yung data. So, in order for us to make a... Uh, uh, by the way, our goal in here is to make a uh, relative frequency histogram. Yeah. Our goal in here is to make the relative frequency histogram. So, but before we, uh, we can make a real relative frequency histogram, we first need to group First, need to group the data into intervals. So then, we count the frequency for each data interval and solve the relative frequency by dividing the frequency by the total number of data. So, let's say our first interval, let's say that is 1.6 to 1.9. Okay? Then, we should count the frequency for this interval right here. What is the frequency for this interval right here? By the way, what is frequency? Frequency uh, in this, in our discussion, is the number of times uh, that data is present. Okay? Kung baga, uh, kung ilang beses na nakita mo yung data, that is frequency. Okay? So for uh, for this range, what number in our data fall in this range? We have one sir. I mean, uh, say our range is one point six to two point zero na lang. Okay. What number or what data falls under this range? You have one point six. 1.9 and 1.9 therefore your frequency is guess what's your guess 2 sir 2 2 okay and uh, for the next naman we are to uh, get down the relative fre frequency so the relative frequency the relative frequency is uh, I mean the relative frequency can be derived by dividing the frequency by the total number of data or your sample size. The relative frequency is just the frequency divided by your sample size. Diba? What is your sample size? What is the sample size for this problem? 
40. That is 40 because it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 multiplied by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So your sample size is 40. So uh, therefore, this range produced a relative frequency of 2 over 40. Or in this in decimal, that is equal to how much? Miss Compute. 0 0.05. 0 0.05. Zero five. So uh, this is just only for a certain range. This is just for a uh, one range now. Now you need to continue up to the uh, highest value of your data. So to, this is the table right here. So you, after you did your uh, uh, interval, you find your frequency. Then you determine your relative frequency, and you do that for uh, all of your data. Okay, so at 2.0 to 2.4 range, there is only one data, which that is 2.2. So therefore, your frequency is what divided by 40. That is 0 0.25. By the way, uh, this table right here, this table right here is not your relative frequency histogram part. This is just your relative frequency table. Again, our goal in here is to make a rel relative frequency histogram. This, ta this is just a table pala. Okay? But we need uh, this table in order for us to create a histogram. Okay? Sige. Ito na yun. If we try to uh, make a histogram, we just need our interval and our relative frequency. Okay, diba? Earlier, uh, we uh, determined that for this range, we have a relative frequency of 0 0.05. For this range naman, for uh, 2.0 to 2.4, we have a relative frequency of 0 0.025. And so on and so forth. Okay, this is now your histogram. This is uh, similar to your bar chart. Yeah, but it's up to you to make your interval. The uh, smaller the interval, the uh, more uh, accurate your histogram. Because if your uh, interval tends to be uh, smallest, uh, I, I mean, if your uh, interval tends to be small, uh, this histogram tends to be a curve. Okay. This will become a curve. And there are also different types of curves for your histogram. There are uh, so-called for your histogram. This uh, one right here, letter C. Uh, this histogram is it is skewed to the left again if the right, uh, I mean the left hand tail is greater than the right hand tail. Conversely naman, it is skewed to the right if your right hand tail is greater than your left hand tail. Okay, for our uh, histogram, uh, is it skewed to the left or is it skewed to the right? We had a problem in drawing our one in our curve. So our curve is our curve is somewhat somewhat like that. Uh, it has a uh, small tail on the left hand side and it has a longer tail on the right hand side. So uh, to the right. What is uh, what can you say about the curve of our histogram? It is skewed to to the right. Hindi ko pala na-edit yung animation, sorry. So, uh, for the last uh, technique or the last method of uh, statistical modeling, we have the box and the whiskers plot. Okay, uh, this plot encloses the interquartile range of the data in a box that has a median displayed within and the interquartile ranges has streams uh, the 75 percentile or the upper quartile and the 25, 25th percentile as the lower quartile. 
So, ganito lang yan. Uh, basically, the parts of your uh, box and whiskers plot is that you have a minimum value. It is right here. This is your minimum value. And this one naman is your maximum value. Okay? And then you have your median, which is denoted by this line right here. And uh, this one right here is your 75% uh, 75 percentile, 75 percentile, and this one, your 25 percentile. Uh, kumbaga, this is your Q1, your uh, Q2 or your median, and your Q3. I mean, this is, sorry, this is Q2 or your median, and uh, for the last one, this is Q3. This one right here. We have 25, 50%, and 75. The minimum and maximum. Uh, this is all uh, we need in order for us to make a box and whiskers plot. plot. So you have a box and a whisker. Uh, ganun, ganun. Uh, uh, this technique of statistical modeling gave, gives us an idea that uh, a bunch of data is uh, within this interquartile range meaning bulk of our data is in this range also uh, you can uh, easily define what is our minimum and maximum value okay so example let's do an example consider the sample data shown you know we have 7 10 28 47 11 26 24 26 12 uh, we need to make a box and whiskers plot using this data right here. Okay, so what should we do? What's the first thing we should do? First, we should arrange our data into an ascending order. Okay, let's try to arrange our data into an ascending order. What is the first uh, data? We have 7, 10, 11, 12, 24, 26... 28, 36, and 47. Okay? So, yun. The first thing we need to do is to arrange our data. The next thing we should do is to find our mean. And how do we find our mean? How do we find our mean? It's the middle value of your arranged data. So, for this data right here, what is our middle value? If this is 9, if this sample size is 9, diba, the median is uh, equal to the, the x with the subscript of plus 1 over 2. Okay, if our sample size is 9, so therefore we have 10 over 2, that is 5. Meaning the fifth data. What is our fifth data? 1, 2, 24, 3, 4, 24. 5. This is our median. Okay? Amo na ini anatom median, which is equal to this one. This is our Q2. We have Q2 na right here, or the median. Next, we determine ama, uh, we determine naman our Q1. And how do we do that? Uh, try to notice that on the left hand side, you have four data right here. And on the right hand side, you have four data also. Okay, to find Q1, you just find what is the median for those data. So, for 7, 10, 11, and 12, what is the median? 10.5. Diba? Kung even an emo data, if you have an even 10. data, 5. you take the two middle number, you add them up, tapos you divide uh, those by two. Or, uh, simply speaking, you take the two middle term, and then you take their average. So, 10 plus 11 divided by 2 is 10.5. Okay, for the, uh, for the right-hand side, what is the median? For the right-hand side, you just have to add 26, uh, 28 and 36, and then you divide it by 2. What's the answer? 32. 32. Okay, so now you have your Q2, Q1, and Q3. You, have, you already have this. And, uh, ano pa yung kulang mo? You have your minimum... What's your minimum? Meaning your minimum data? 7. Seven. And the maximum is? 47. Ten. 47. This one. The minimum value is this one and the maximum is this one right here. 
Okay, we already now have our minimum and maximum Q1, Q2, and Q3. So, uh, technically, we can write na, or we can draw na our box and whiskers plot. But, we first need to check our minimum and maximum value if they are outlier. Okay, to check if uh, our minimum and maximum value, uh, if they are outlier, we need to do this one. So, Q1, okay, minus the 1.5 of our interquartile range, okay, and Q3 minus our, I mean, plus our 1.5 of our interquartile range. Meaning, our minimum and maximum value should be in this range right here. Okay? Okay, kung, uh, Kapag lumampas na sila dito sa range natin, therefore, we can consider our minimum and maximum value as our outliers. And then, we need to change our minimum and maximum value by our uh, smallest limit and our uh, largest limit. Okay, so let's try to uh, solve this range. So, Q1 is 10.5. Uh, by the way, how, we did, how do we determine IQR or the interquartile range? The interquartile range is just only equal to the Q3 minus the Q1. What is Q3? We have 32 and Q1 is 10.5. What is the interquartile range? 21.5. Okay. So we have an IQR of 21.5. So, next, what do we do? We now find our range. So, Q1, which is equal to 10.5, minus 1.5 of IQR, 21.5. And, uh, Q3, which is equal to 32, plus 1.5 of IQR. What are those values? What is this value right here? Please compute. Negative 21. Negative 21.75. And this one? 64.25. 64.25. So let's try to check. Our minimum value is 7. Okay, meaning, pasok siya sa range na to. From negative 21.75 to 64. Pasok yung minimum mo. Your maximum naman is also uh, pasok din siya. Because it is less than 64.25. So therefore, your minimum and maximum value are not outlier. Had your minimum value became negative, let's say negative 22, okay, we can uh, say that your minimum value is an outlier. Sige. So let's try to draw. We already have our minimum maximum Q1, Q2, and Q3. So let's try to do it using a number line. Okay? This is your x-axis. This is your x-axis right here. You have a minimum of 7. Let's say 7 is here. Let's say 7 is here. And your maximum is 47. Let's just say it's here. 47. And you have your Q1. You have your Q1 of 10.5. It's somewhere here. This is 10.5. And your Q3 being equal to 32. So, somewhere here. So, you drew a box. You draw a box. For that one. And then, for the median, which is equal to 24, which is uh, somewhere here. You now have your box and whiskers plot. Ito na yung box and whiskers plot mo. Wherein you have your uh, minimum, your maximum, and your interquartile range. Okay? This is now your box and whiskers plot. Uh, if you try to notice, it's uh, the same actually in our example above. I just uh, used the x-axis. Okay? Uh, this one utilized the, uh, uh, the y-axis. In here, I utilize the x-axis. 